Thousands of football supporters have gathered in Manchester to pay their respects for arguably England's greatest ever player. The great and the good of footballing world were in attendance at Manchester Cathedral. Sir Alex Ferguson was there. Sir Bobby was on the Manchester United board for a number of years when Sir Alex was in charge. A number of former and current Manchester United players were also there to pay their respects. Sir Bobby was, of course, also known for his heroics for England, helping them win their only World Cup back in 1966 and was also their record goal scorer until 2015. Now, current England manager Gareth Southgate was also there in attendance, the president of UEFA, Alexander Shefferin, and the future England, King of England, I should say, and president of the FA, Prince William, was also there, as you see now. Well, we expect around 1,000 guests at Manchester Cathedral, and there were many more at Old Trafford. Well, the cortege there making its way through a guard of honour formed by academy players from Manchester United's under-18 and under-21 teams passing the Holy Trinity statue at Old Trafford before arriving at Manchester Cathedral for the service. Oh, it's a sad day, um, obviously for football, for Manchester United and the family. Um, you know, but Sir Bobby, you know, is a great player to win the World Cup, uh, win the European Champions League, um, and then have the career that he had. He was just a fantastic uh, player, but not just a fantastic player. He was a great person, uh, had time for everybody, and did a lot of charity work. How important was he for you around the club, bringing that sort of spirit and history into the dressing room that, that you were in? Uh, it, it's really important that you have icons like him, you, you know, uh, heading up the front of the club. Um, you know, and for me, when I first came to Manchester United, record signing, uh, he was the first person, uh, once I'd signed the contract, to come up and say, look, at it, enjoy it, it's a great club, Brian, um, and just enjoy your time here. And you were the Manchester United captain who lifted the Premier League trophy in 1993. They hadn't won the league since the days of Sir Bobby in 1968. Was that particularly a special moment that you felt, Sir Bobby, seeing the, the glory coming back? Uh, really special. You, you know, Sir Bobby and Sir Matt were still alive when we actually achieved that. After 26 years, this club not winning the title, um, you know, it was far too long. So it was great to be part of that, and it was great that Sir Bob and Sir Mal were both alive to witness it. It was a, an honour, you know, even what I did as a player, but to play was Sir Bobby Charlton. I mean, it was a tremendous feat, and uh, you can't, I can't thank him enough for helping me out in my career because he was just a, a perfect gentleman and a winner, and that's the main thing. Absolutely. What are your fondest memories of him as, maybe not just a player, but as, as a friend as well, of course? Yeah, well, well yeah, obviously in those days there was no mobile phones or anything like that. We, we played a lot of uh, competitions, playing cards and cribbage and things like that, but that, that, was, a, that was the norm. But, you know, realistically, you know, you, it, things happen and you remember things. And, and walking from a taxi here to the cathedral, it's very windy. You know, and to me, I mean, I can remember Bobby when he scored a fantastic goal. He said, "And wave his little bit of hair back." You know, and that just reminded me of him doing that. You know, unbelievable. Absolutely. You stood up there, of course, celebrating that famous cup win, the first English side to do it. And you, I've heard you talk about just standing back and watching it all happen and. 
him up there and we've seen the famous pictures and you're just kind of discreetly in the background aren't you yeah you know it's, it's like everything else he was captain and when you know you, you're only a captain when you run up those those steps at Wembley to the Royal Boxes it was in those days you know to be behind him was a great honour a great honour and because the photographs show him receiving the, the trophy and there I am behind him which you know at the end of the day it could have been better for me well John a very very special man what are your memories of him well, obviously, I played against him a few times. Um, great player, uh, had total respect for him, and, and he also had respect for you. So, so it was a mutual thing. Uh, but a tremendous player, uh, de deserved all the accolades that he got, and one of the game's greatest players. How good was he? I mean, we talk about left foot, right foot. He could do do the lot, couldn't he? I mean, and, and and to be able to shoot with the power he did with either foot from 20, 30 yards with those old balls. Yeah, striking the ball very, very consistent. I think heading the ball was maybe his own, the only thing he wasn't brilliant at. But everything else, gentleman as well, uh, nice to talk to, amiable, approachable. Um, just a, a shining example of what great footballers should be. For some of the fame that he had, he was so shy and couldn't handle the fame most of the time. But he was a lovely man, he was. I used to see him every day because his, his daughter and my daughter went to the same school together. So I used to see him... After training in the morning, we see him about three o'clock in the afternoon, half past three in the afternoon, so I saw so much of Bob, but what a nice man he was. Gentleman of the highest quality. And I'm not saying that because you, everybody seems to say that about people that have obviously died, but he was such a nice man, Bobby. On the pitch, what a moaner. Oh, dear me. The number of times I used to moan all the time, and I said to him, Bobby, People can't do what you can do. So there's no point in you moaning at them. They just can't do what you can do. They couldn't understand that. What are your favourite memories of him? Oh, playing with him, of course, was the favourite memories. And as I said, you never stopped moaning from the game. Just started to the game finished. But he was a great lad off the pitch. Terrific fella. Lovely man. How will he be remembered, do you think, by the world of football? Oh, without question, his ability. His ability, his outstanding ability. You go... Travelling with United, like I did when we were playing, everybody, the minute you, met, you, you said Manchester United is somebody, they said Bobby Charlton. He was the name everybody knew. Everybody knew. We're just, not just celebrating the incredible career of who I believe to be the most important footballer in English football history. That's what we're celebrating. We're also celebrating, in a way, it feels like an era. Because yeah. it feels like a bit of an end of an era. You know, for those people who saw those players, you know, and with each member of that World Cup um, squad that, that sadly leaves us, it just feels like that mm. connection is gone. So it's a sad time in that way, but, yeah, also a celebration of a, a man who epitomised, don't forget, not just everything that was right about English football, everything that was right about Manchester United Football Club. Um, and it's a great reminder, a great reminder, that it is a fantastic institution well and represented... Um, that Sir Bobby represents him brilliantly. I remember Jimmy Armfield, um, who, who sadly left us um, a couple of years ago, he used to tell me a story that all the members of the squad of 66, mm. every I think it was springtime, mm. they'd all go together, um, no publicity, they'd go to a hotel, I think it was in Staffordshire, in the countryside, the players and their wives, their partners, they'd have a game of golf, they'd do some shopping, they'd have dinner, but no publicity, they didn't want any publicity, and they just used to get there every year and reminisce about what happened in 66 and about what they did throughout their careers. And towards the end, you know, when, when age takes its toll, Jimmy said it got sad because now one or two didn't turn up, some were ill. And it's just lovely for them to get together and to remember what was a golden age, you know, both for Manchester United and for England. He didn't have to be nervous around Sir Bobby. You know, he played in a couple of press games mm. and he would be, he'd make the lads feel at ease. He was down to earth. And again, I just come back to that. It is a reminder, I think, an important reminder in these times. When we talk about... Mm everything that goes on around football and Manchester United right now when we talk about everything behind the scenes and then we talk about you know on the pitch it's worth reminding you know that, that Bobby represented everything that was great that is great that is still great about Manchester United and he did it better than anyone has ever done. Mm. And he very much tried to instill that into mm. each generation that came through by being present at the club yeah. and educating them about what he'd come through and how yeah. different times had changed. Yes. He was synonymous with everything that it stands for. Mm. You know, with the values, A, on the pitch and B, off the pitch. You know, A, on the pitch specifically, played with a, a brand of football that was exciting, that was thrilling to watch, that was fair. And everything off the pitch conducted himself in a manner that befits uh, you know, a, 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 a giant of Old Trafford. Mm. 
well, in a way, this is a perfect occasion. But very, obviously a very sad, very poignant occasion, but it's very hushed, very respectful, very like the man himself. I mean, you think of, you, know, you mentioned the Ballon d'Or, the World Cup in 66, the, uh, the European Cup in 68, you know, all his great feats, and yet he was never one to make a, a song or dance about it. For me, he was England's greatest ever sporting icon, male, female, any sport, not simply because of what he achieved, the wins, the victories, the personal um, awards that he got, but for the way he played the game, the sort of dignity, which some people say maybe has sort of disappeared a bit from the game, and uh, Sir Bobby Charlton represented all that, and you can see, you know, the outpouring of grief. I mean, you, you will have been to Old Trafford, you will have seen the uh, the tributes by the uh, by the United Trinity, and it's not simply from Manchester United fans; it's from fans from all over the world. It's from fans of other clubs because Sir Bobby transcended sport. He transcended. England. He was just, you know, I mean, you'll have travelled around the world and bumped into him, and and you'll have seen, you know, when he was ambassador for England's World Cup bits, you know, the queues to talk to him. I mean, it was, you know, it was Beatlemania in a way. I mean, I think they will all feel that they've lost a friend as well as a great servant to the club because of his humanity, because of his advice, because he'd been through so many extraordinary things that, that you know, the peaks and troughs of, of life, of his profession, and you just you know the fact that he won the Ballon d'Or you know he's wherever you go in the world people will remember him they'll remember the goals against Mexico they'll remember the goals against Portugal they'll remember the goals for Manchester United on the run to 66 and in the final itself you know just as one of the great sporting men and an icon of Manchester United and that's why everyone's gathered here today.